All right, technical problem. Uh oh. Uh oh. Temporary break. Talk among yourselves. I'll give you a topic price of eggs in China. Thank you, Leah. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Father God, we come to you today just thankful. Thankful that you are our God and that you sent your son to die on the cross for us so that we could have hope and we can Lord, we ask that you would be with each and every one of us and be with those who were unable to make it today. And Lord, just bless this sermon and Bless this day. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And first of all, I'd like to extend a happy birthday to Lawrence Parks. The big 8-0 today. Happy birthday, Lawrence. All righty. This morning we had uh, 45 uh, members present in Sunday school and uh, 45 members present. Let's see. No visitors. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, uh, the Coffee Creek 
Baptist Association sings Spring Spiration is tonight here at KCBC at 6 o'clock. Uh, bring any items you uh, have bought for... Wait a minute. Bring any items that you have bought for the Southeastern Youth Camp, uh, the list on the bulletin board for their needs. Also, we need finger foods for the fellowship following the service. Finger foods is weird, Larry. I think we ought to just go with small sandwiches on that one. Uh, the June newsletter articles are due Tuesday. Uh, the Wednesday night meal this week is lasagna. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer in there for anything that you might want to bring as far as sides. Um, then everyone's invited to stay for the adult Bible study and the 412 Youth and Kingdom Kids at 630. Um, in your bulletin, uh, if you want to, check out all the graduation services and parties that are listed. Um, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board for the baseball game in Indianapolis, and that's July 28th. Ought to be nice and cool. Um, Indianapolis Indians will host the Louisville Bats at Victory Field. Uh, you, must, you must sign up by the 28th so the tickets can be ordered. The tickets are $18 and need to be paid for when you sign up. Please give your money to Judy. Uh, next Sunday is Pentecost. Uh, so please wear red. Uh, if you're interested in singing in a community choir, uh, please see the flyer on the bulletin board in the foyer for more information. Um, I just get nervous anymore standing up here, and I have no idea why. I'm shaking like a leaf. It's just pitiful. But I have been traumatized. Um, I had some uh, allergy tests done a couple weeks ago. I think they use a cat of nine tails to do that with. The lady showed me a little apparatus. She said, I'll be taking this and uh, stick it in your back and it'll rough up the skin a little bit. And uh, then we'll check to see what whelps up. I'm like, okay. So I'm gonna do it six times. I'm like, six times. She said, it takes me less than a minute. This woman flew into a frenzy, stabbing me in the back. Becky said, I've never seen you make such a face. And, but I, I walked away like a man uh, and I'm allergic to everything that's right outside my house so that's also nice even the grass I just put down is the only kind of grass I'm allergic to so amen God is good well Mickey I don't know if I can follow that act or not <laughs> I don't know if I can follow that act or not. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we'll trade stories. I've done the allergy testing about three times now, so yes. <laughs> That's it. Builds character. Good morning. Good to see you all this morning. Uh, we've been back. Uh, in the office since Tuesday of this past week, saw, saw many folks, it was good to see all of you this morning as we're coming back from vacation, and um, I won't say too much, but I'll share some pictures with you later. You don't know, I don't know what might end up there on that wall, so, but it is good to be with you all, and we just come praising the Lord as we come to worship and glorify our Lord and Savior, amen? As we come into a time of prayer, many prayer concerns this morning. Praying for Carolyn Nolan, praying for uh, Connie Gillen Walter. Okay, I did say it right, okay. Uh, Bobby Parks, Susan Clucky, who is having surgery tomorrow. Karen Joyce, who is having cataract surgery tomorrow. And there, I can, but I can still see you, can you see me? Okay. Uh, praying for Samantha Kelly. That baby wants to be born, <laughs> but it's way too early. <laughs> Angie Riley, Daniel Ash, uh, praying for our graduates, several unspoken concerns, praying for Sabrina Hill, who's been sick all week, remembering the family of Dakota Mayberry, and praying for Janie Hogan. Other prayer concerns this morning? Yes, ma'am. Your mom and dad, what's their names?
Brandon and Courtney? Okay. Other prayer concerns? I think y'all got everything on the list already. That must mean that you're ready to praise the Lord this morning. How are we going to praise God today? Yes, sir. Mom's going to get better. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That is good news indeed. Yes, ma'am. We had our kingdom kids walk in, and we had 14 children participate, and we had a good time with our ambassadors. Kingdom kids lock in this last Friday night, 14 participants, and had a great time. Praise God. Yes, ma'am. Brother Renee wrecked, but he is fine. Praise God. Yes. Well, you got something way back there? <laughs> Amen. Praise God indeed. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Carly, good to see you this morning. Praises. Yes, ma'am. Brother, we can't let you go nowhere, can we? <laughs> Praise God. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. That's I'm glad to have Hazel with you. We're glad to have Hazel with us this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen, indeed. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Ah, oh, Father Lord, how good it is to be in your house this day to to focus our hearts and minds upon you this morning as we begin a brand new week. In the first day of the week, here we are, focusing upon you this day. May you receive the glory and the honor and praise that you so richly deserve. Thank you, Lord, for how you bless our lives day in and day out as we hear these words of joy this morning of how people are praising you, Father Lord. We just lift them all up to you and thank you for how you bless us day in and day out. So many times when we're honest, Lord, we take you for granted. But never let us do that, Father, Lord. May we just continue to see the joy of your reach in our life day in and day out. May we be continually reminded that you are the fount of all blessings indeed. Father, as we come here today, we're... First and foremost, worshiping your holy name because you alone are worthy of our praise. And all that we say and all that we do this morning, may we point others only to you today. Lord, we thank you for the fact that you have called us, you have elected us and brought us into your body, making us your church. And may we truly be your church that you have planted here for such a time as this. Continue to show us and push us out the doors that we can see how we can be of greater service to you as we serve and worship your holy name. 
Father, we come with many concerns upon our hearts as we pray for Carolyn, for Connie, for Bobby, for Susan, for Karen, for Samantha, for Angie, for Daniel, for our graduates, for many unspoken concerns, for Sabrina, for the Mayberry family in their time of loss and grief, for Janie, and for Brenda. We lift all these up to you and so many more, Father, praying for your healing touch and grace upon each and every life. We just pray, Lord, that you will bring the healing that only you, the great physician, can provide. And we just pray, Lord, that you will show us how we can reach out with your love and be your servants for these and so many more. Lord, as we come at this time of offering, we just pray, Lord, as we return your tithe, as we bring you offerings, that they will be a true sign and symbol of our love for you this morning and every day. Thank you, Lord, for returning these gifts to us as your church to be used for the advancement of your kingdom here in our congregation, our community, and throughout the cosmos. May you be praised now and forevermore. This is our prayer, and we pray this in your Son's name, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand with us again for our offertory hymn. beyond description to marvelous for words to wonderful for comprehension like nothing ever seen or heard who can grasp your infinite wisdom who can fathom Just to think that God loves 
praises to you because you deserve everything. Be, despite our faults and our mishaps and our shortcomings, God, you love us and you want us. You are calling us this morning, Lord. May our ears be open. May our hearts be open to receive you this morning. God, that we just praise you and thank you for the glorious time that we can gather together. God, that we just thank you for the many things that you're doing this week that we aren't even aware of. The things that we've asked for last month that you're still working on because you haven't forgotten us. God, we just thank you for all the great things you're doing. And God, we thank you for Jesus and his sacrifice. God, we just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Psalms. As we approach the, the psaltery this morning, turn to the 96th Psalm. Psalm 96. I'm going to put this down here somewhere. <laughs> so I'm not covering up your keyboard. <laughs> Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the Lord is established. The world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. What a powerful psalm indeed as we sing, as we read Psalm 96 this morning. You cannot read it, oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. I guess you can read it that way, but why? Feel the power and majesty of the Lord, amen? You hear the difference what I'm talking about this morning? Let us come before the Lord in splendor of holiness. I get asked all the time when we go on vacation, what do pastors do on vacation anyways? Well, that's a good question. Uh, this time, Pam and I, and we both got to go, uh, we went up to Fort Wayne uh, for several different reasons. Yes, there was a bookstore there, and we visited it. And there, our wallets were a little lighter, and their bookshelves were a little lighter after we left. We went to a baseball game, uh, the Fort Wayne 10 Caps. Uh, they didn't do too good. <laughs> Uh, ask me the score later. Spent time in God's Word. You do that on vacation? Absolutely. This is the book of life. Amen? And God don't take no vacations. So we spend time in God's Word and enjoy the beauty of God's creation. We went up to, to Pokagon State Park. It's spelled Pokagon, but all the locals call it Pokagon. And Wabachi State Park, and don't even try to get me on that spelling. It's a French word. And we just had a ball while we were up there. Let me show you a few pictures here. Okay, Pam, you're going to shoot me later. You're the first one. Uh, Pam is up there at Wabachi, and she's standing her plaque. She's very happy. You can't read on there, but it's talking about buffalo and bisons. And she loves her buffalo. We'll come back to that in just a minute. And, yep, there I am getting ready to go hiking down the trail there at uh, Pokagon State Park, having a great time in the Lord. Uh, I really like that picture. It serves no spiritual purpose that I can think of this morning other than praise God for his creation, amen? It just come out really nice, all those leaves on the tree there, the oak tree, and uh, these little critters. Some, uh, is that honeysuckle? And in the next one, there's some more honeysuckle. Did y'all... When you were growing up around here, did y'all tear off the honeysuckle and, and suck them? Okay, I, I didn't know if that was a Tennessee thing or not. That's rhododendron, and that one came out pretty good. Is a tr that's a trillium? Okay. 
Well, that's a flower. <laughs> and I told you, Pam loved her buffalo, and that's what we were doing at Wabachi State Park. They got a buffalo herd there. I don't remember how many head, and that picture came up really good. Uh, I was kind of excited, praise the Lord. And Pam loves her birds. And I, I was using a long angle, Jim, I was using a long angle lens, and then I got it on computer, and I cropped it and blew it up some more. And it's hard to tell, but that's a red-winged blackbird right there. And how do you like that woodpecker? He was pretty far off, and I think that picture turned out pretty good and kind of dark, but I kind of like that one. You see, you see all the, the, the ducklings with Mama and Daddy there? Goslings, well, yeah. Baby. Yeah, I'm just going to get corrected this morning, okay? <laughs> They're youngins with those things. And I just thought it was kind of neat. And we went to, we always find a church to worship with. And here we are with uh, Pastor David and Sister Candy over at North Madison Baptist Church. And they said, well, why do you want to get a picture with us? I said, to prove we were here. <laughs> I said, everybody's going to be excited to see y'all when I show this next Sunday. And they said, well, tell everybody we said hey. So Pastor David and Candy said, tell everybody say hey. So we did. What do pastors do on vacation? Well, again, one of the things that I love to do is spending time in God's creation and spending time in God's word. It's something we take for granted, but let us never do that. Another question I get asked from time to time is, how did you come up with this sermon anyways? Where did it come about from? Uh, well, the Bible is the short answer. This is our textbook for life, as we've already said. This is the book of life indeed, and everything comes from God's word. We're sharing God's word when we're doing sermons. But the thoughts, the process, it can come from many different places. And this was the bulletin two Sundays ago. It was a Sunday right before we went on vacation. And it just caught my attention. I love that picture. Y'all like that picture there with the waterfall? You remember it from a couple Sundays ago? And the scripture on there is Psalm 96, verse 9. It's in the King James, and it says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Uh, in the ES ESV here that we're reading from, in the splendor of holiness. Same word, same meaning right there. And I just kept looking at that all Sunday long. What does that mean to worship the Lord in the beauty and the splendor of holiness anyways? And I'm seeing the picture on there of the waterfall, so immediately my mind goes to the outdoors. And as we are out and about last uh, the previous week, out at the state parks and what have you, I kept thinking about worshiping the Lord in this creation but in the process of reading from God's Word that's not precisely what this verse means look if you will please at verse 9 of Psalm 96 again worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness and we ask the question how can we do that it's in my study Bible it gives an alternative from the translators of how to translate it we could read it, worship the Lord in holy attire. It's how we're dressed as we approach the Lord. Now, is that talking about being in a tie and a suit and everything? No. That's not what it's talking about at all at this point in time. It's talking about holy attire. How we approach the Lord in a manner of worship. Dr. Spurgeon, in one of his commentaries, writes on this verse, Worship must not be rendered to God in a slovenly, sinful, superficial manner. We must be reverent, sincere, earnest, and pure in hearts, both in our prayers and our praises. Purity is the white linen of the Lord's choristers. Righteousness is the comely garment of his priest. Holiness is the royal apparel of his servitors. It's talking about how we approach the Lord as individuals, how the Lord has made a difference in our lives as 
we have accepted him as Lord and Savior as the Holy Spirit takes residence in our lives. What is our lives like when we stand before the Lord? Do we look like everybody else out on the street corner? Or is there something different in our lives? And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. When the creator of the world, the majesty of the universe comes into our lives, there ought to be something different about our lives. Amen? We should not look, sound, smell, taste the way we did before. People should know that Jesus Christ has taken residence in us. As I kept thinking about that and chewing on that all week long, how do we worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness? What is this holy attire that the psalmist speaks of as we approach our holy God? I went to Colossians in chapter 3, verses 12 to 14, and it talks about how we are to dress in our daily lives. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Brothers and sisters, we are called to dress ourselves with compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. I have people all the time tell me about how they don't need no church to worship God that they could go out to the fish bank and worship God just fine. And I just look at them and say, do you really worship God or do you just while away the moments? Well, there are times absolutely we do it, but when we're honest, we need one another. And these scriptures remind us of how much we need one another because when God takes residence in our lives, he is seeking to make a difference, a change in us and how we relate to one another. All of these things are not a solitary Christian life. They're all about how we live in community with one another. We are called to clothe ourselves with compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. And did you hear verse 13? Bearing with one another. Let's be honest, we get on each other's nerves from time to time, don't we? That's just part of being human. It's part of being a family. All families get on each other's nerves from time to time. They don't kill each other. That's abnormal, right? Bear with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. May I also say that we put on forgiveness how do we know what this forgiveness looks like again verse 13 as the Lord has forgiven you so you also must forgive we have the example in Jesus Christ how we are to live our lives and above all these Put on love. You remember a, a few weeks ago, we talked about those different words for love in the, uh, the Greek language. There's like eight different words. They don't use just one word saying, I love my wife, I love my car, I love ice cream. They're different words. That's one of the things that Greeks got on the English. But, I won't go to that joke, never mind. This right here is agape. Frequently we say God's kind of love. I like to say stubborn love. I'm going to love you no matter what you do to me because I have decided to love you. We are to put on agape 
in our lives. And how we stand before the Lord in holy attire matters to him because he is looking to see that changed hearts in our lives when we come to worship him. In other words, our worship is not just based on saying the right words or singing the right songs. And even with how comfortable we are in the sanctuary, our worship is how we come before our Lord Jesus Christ as we come in the splendor of holiness. Do you remember at Matthew chapter 5 and part of the Sermon on the Mount in verses 23 and 24 when Jesus said, if, so if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. God says, bring your offering, but first be clothed in the splendor of holiness. Remember, we are to forgive one another and we're to ask forgiveness of one another. Living in community is tough stuff, ain't it? And that's what we are called to do and called to be. We are not solitary Christians. We are the body of Christ. We are the family of God. We are the hands and feet of Christ as we come together to show this world what they're missing with not being part of God's family. How we live our lives matters to God greatly. True worship is when we are focused on God. True worship is how we allow Him to take residence, to take room, to take root, to take up space, to engulf our lives. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. How much is this body worth? Well, I go to the doctor and I keep hearing everything that I've not done right and I need to improve on and get better on. Mm, I'm sure some of you have had those experiences too. But did you hear God's word? This body, your body, is worth Jesus Christ dying on the cross. We were bought with a price. Let us worship our holy God because he's the one that matters and matters completely. It's all about Jesus, amen? Let us focus our hearts, our lives, our minds, even our worship upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are called to worship our Lord not based upon our preferences and how we want to do things, but we are called to worship our Lord in the splendor of holiness. We are called to worship the Lord in holy attire. Have you put on the Lord's clothes? Can others tell that you are not your own, that you were bought with a price, that God owns you, heart and soul, life and all. It's all about Jesus. Again, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Life is tough enough with Jesus. I can't imagine how people get through life without him. Know me? Oh. May we focus our hearts and minds upon the one who matters and matters completely. Our great God, indeed. As we come into this time of worship, as we come to this time known as invitation, let me invite you to come to Jesus Christ. 
Have you been trying to live life on your own and just throwing on whatever clothes seem to fit? Jesus says, try, try the Jesus clothes. They're not the ones you can buy in the store. They are the ones that will make a difference in your life. Try his holy attire, and you will see how life can be joyful indeed in Jesus Christ. Let us worship him in the splendor of holiness with all that we have. Even now when we come to this invitation, let us sing out with joy and gusto and make sure that this roof don't get between us and our Lord, that he can hear our joy this morning as we sing Great is the Lord. He's the one that matters indeed. Have you said yes to Jesus Christ in your life? Have you accepted his free gift of salvation? If you have not, I invite you to come even now and say yes to him. Perhaps, brothers and sisters, we, we start to do worship, you know, in, in rote. It's just because we're supposed to do it. It's a thing to do on Sunday mornings. And we forget how God wants to make a difference in our lives. Instead of focusing on ourselves and our preferences and our wants and our desires and who we are, may we rededicate ourselves this morning to worship our Lord with all that we are and all that we have. Perhaps you're here today and you need a church home. You need a church family that you can belong to that, well, I was going to say, what did that say in the scripture? We get on each other's nerves. We can get on each other's nerves together. And more importantly, we can forgive one another and we can practice out that holy attire the Lord has called us to adorn ourselves with. However the Lord is leading you this morning, say yes to Jesus. Don't put them off. Put them on. As our musicians come, let us stand and let us sing in joy to our Lord. Come and be faithful to how Jesus leads you this morning. Let us worship the Lord even now in our holy attire. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great!
may we go forth from here rejoicing that we have been in the Lord's presence. Amen? Amen. That we have been with brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? Amen? And let us go forth rejoicing that we have been in the splendor of His majesty and of His glory. And let us come before Him and let us go forth from here because everywhere we go, we take the Lord with us. Let us go in His holy attire in the splendor of his majesty indeed. Let us praise God. Amen. How great is our God. Oh, sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. God bless and thank you for coming this morning.